Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in again today. As always, before we get started, I urge you to tell a friend about the show. Share the Coffee Health and, Health and Science Podcast and all the lovely archives that we have for you. We appreciate it when you spread the show. Today, we are on the line with Dr. Coffee. What's up, Dr. Coffee? Hey, hey, it's another day above ground living the dream, my friend. Absolutely, man. That actually ties in well with what we're talking about today. You know what I mean? We are above ground. We are, in fact, living the dream. I wanted to talk about a subject that's come up before on this podcast. It's a very hot topic. Pardon the pun. Oh, I'm excited. What is it? It is something that is known as flow or flow states. This idea of entering into flow, a kind of state that your brain drops into that allows you to operate at a very high level and is characterized by a few different attributes. You know, something like um, Michael Jordan saying that the basketball rim looked as big as a hula hoop. I couldn't miss. He was in flow state at that point. Another characteristic is that time might fly by or the passage of time will be altered. It'll seem like, you know, time flies when you're having fun. A lot of times you're in flow when that's happening. And usually you're doing a complex, challenging task at a high level when doing it. But there's lots of different versions of this. Dr. Coffee, what has your research uh, brought you when you're researching things like flow? And uh, what have you discovered about this phenomenon? Oh, so this is a really, really, really neat phenomenon because there's another term for it that I use instead of flow state. And many of your listeners might know this. It's called being in the zone. Mm -hmm. In the zone, right? Absolutely. You've heard that before. So, in the zone or flow state is when the fluidity, the oneness, the mindfulness between mind and body connect. Mm -hmm. And there's a really interesting history with coffee. So <laughs> why not go back and talk about the history of coffee, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really interested to know how coffee and stimulation plays into flow states. So it was really interesting that in the olden days, for breakfast in the morning when people woke up, you know what they used to drink? Beer. Right. Beer, alcohol. They used to have a watered down beer. That's good for you. <laughs> well, it's not good for flow state. <laughs> Well, it's good for flow state if you're in, in the zone of being an amoeba. <laughs> you know, that always reminds me, there's commercials on TV all the time for memory for this uh, product. I won't use the name so I don't get sued, but they're from jellyfish. And when I think about my brain, I always want to be just like a jellyfish, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the state you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, so that's the zone I want to be in, jellyfish. But that's how people really got moving during the day was by drinking some alcohol. Yeah, my understanding being that um, water would often carry waterborne diseases. So a lot of these older cultures would have beer, which was more potable. Pretty interesting. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then along came coffee. Mm -hmm. And coffee had caffeine. And it woke you up. So they were the original, not to fight with any Republicans, they were the original woke culture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can imagine a world where everyone's going from drinking beer first thing in the morning to uh, drinking coffee. I know Michael Pollan had, a, had an article recently come out on this and how that changed our ability to work and produce and flow. So I think that's what you're leading to. Absolutely. It is what I'm leading to. Picture that you were a musician or a dancer or a carpenter back in the day, and you would start your day by drinking beer and figure out whether or not you could really do a great job of your, of your mind-body balance. I honestly can't imagine as someone who does not drink and, and like you said, I know they watered it down, right? They would water down wine and that would make it easier. But still, you're getting drunk first thing in the morning. And then, like you said, you got to go perform your tasks. Probably a totally different vibe of society. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I've said this before. I'm an older guy. So I wasn't born with a computer in my hand. But the human brain has always been of interest to me. So let me put it into 
perspective of what some of your tech people will know. We can process about 130 bits of information per second. Mm -hmm. That goes up in flow. It goes down in mind-changing events like inebriation. When the Dalai Lama talks about mindfulness, he's really talking about being 100% focused and having your mind-body work together, which is being in the zone. And what happened was caffeine and coffee came into the world. There were actually groups and people threatened by the fact that people were now thinking smarter and able to concentrate better and to engage better and had more energy during the day. And that threatened them. So there were cultures in which coffee was made illegal. Yeah, absolutely. We can go back to this show and listen to some of the times that coffee's been illegalized. We did a whole coffee history on it. And Dr. Steve, it kind of points to that uh, kind of conspiracy theory mindset, which is you're absolutely right. These coffee houses were a place for people to discuss political dissent and things like that. And the status quo didn't like that. So they would illegalize it. That is very, very true. Exactly. Exactly. But that has changed. And for most of the world, Coffee is now legal and coffee is being drunk <laughs> instead of beer making you drunk. Coffee is being drunk and we get into a flow state where we're able to do fully immersed things. That's the best way I can describe it. So you're a hundred percent in what you are doing and that would be being in the zone in the flow state. And we see it in high-performing people like mountain climbers. I saw a uh, Netflix or one of the programs on the internet had this uh, movie about somebody who was in the zone climbing freestyle. Yeah. And it was just incredible watching that. Man, I mean, there's so many different forms of this, right? Many that frighten me, but I think we've all experienced it on a different level. You're saying that you think that coffee and caffeine and this stimulation goes hand in hand with, I'm sure that too much would be an imbalance, right? But it seems to kind of optimize at a certain level. Absolutely. So, you know, one to two cups in the morning of a good brewed coffee, let's say like a purity coffee, which is still my favorite coffee. Yeah, buddy. So something like that really helps you open the door for flow state for being in the zone. And then if you will self-actualize yourself into whatever you're doing, if you'll be there at 100%, you can really get into the zone much easier. So there are people that can get into the zone. It takes work. Like I know a famous grandmaster chess player. When he plays, he's in the zone. He talks about it. And it's easier for him to get in than the newbie because he's been immersing himself for so long. Right. Caffeine helps open the door for us to do that. Wow. That's insane. And that does make a lot of sense. You're right. When you're used to dropping into that state, again, back to like Michael Jordan, you could see when he would, when he would turn on in a game when he was playing with the Bulls dream team. You know what I mean? And it's almost like a, it's almost like a switch gets flipped. Yep. Exactly. I love it, man. So there are a couple of things your listeners may want to know. First of all, about meditation and mindfulness. And I know I've offered before, and I can't believe the number of people from the podcast who have written me and asked me to send them things. And I hope everybody is enjoying, but there's just been an incredible number of people asking. So I do have something I've written on mindfulness. Nice. It's a five-minute guide to mindfulness and meditation. And it, with a cup of coffee, can help you get to being in the flow quicker than not coffee and not mindfulness alone. <laughs> I love this. Uh, maybe throw out your, your new, brand new email. If anyone wants to reach out to Dr. Coffee, uh, grab yourself this resource or some of the other resources that you've heard about. What's your email, Dr. Coffee? Doc, D-O-C, at myhealthypatient.com. 
Nice. And you can reach Dr. Coffee there. He's always so generous uh, answering your emails, guys. And you guys are awesome when you write in. I do love that. Again, we'll have some more to say on that in a minute. But yeah, let's, let's finish up here on the coffee and flow state riff. Yeah. So the other thing that I have, which I'd like to go over today, is the barrier. So, you know, we live in a world where our mind is just being bombarded by the outside world. We get hundreds of texts a day and calls a day, and we're constantly looking at Facebook and other social media. And so I want to talk about the problem of procrastination and the lack of flow state that is present for somebody who does not take an active form in getting themselves into flow state. So in order to get yourself in the zone, the first thing you do is you need to identify why you procrastinate. Mm -hmm. As Stephen Wright, the comedian, said, he had a friend that got a birthmark at age seven, and he knew he was a procrastinator. (laughs) So... You have to identify why you procrastinate. So I'm going to give your readers a couple of things on our checklist. One, you're scared of failure, change, or negative feedback. Mm -hmm. Two, you get panic attack, anxiety, or overwhelm. Oh, yeah. Three, you don't know where to begin or how to tackle what you need to do. Right. Four, your task seems too big to handle. Mm -hmm. Five, you have a doubt as to whether or not you have the knowledge and skills you need to do the task. Sure. Six, you don't have enough time to do it. Mm -hmm. Seven, you're either mentally or physically distracted and can't focus. Mm -hmm. And then last, is you lack motivation or energy. That's an interesting list. You know, you talk about our current state of society, and I think about all those, and really number two, like we've all had the thought that we might fail. Like that's a human tendency. So we've all had the thought that we might not have the skills to do the job. That might actually be true. But the one that seems to be really bad in in 2022, probably a lot to do with technology and social media and things like that, is the second one you said. This generalized anxiety Combined with the one you said about overwhelm, I think that that's really where people get spun out the most. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but but that seems to be kind of piled on by today's modern stimuli. Yeah, you know, all of them lead into each other. It's really they all handshake with each right, other. But that's true. In in order to figure it out as to where to start, that's a great list because it helps you check off. Okay, here's where I'm stuck. And it gives you a starting point. The problem with so many people is that everything goes into their to-do basket rather than into the done basket. Yep. So we're constantly <laughs> working with a three-basket life, inbox, outbox, and to-do. And we just move our inbox into the to-do list, and it keeps growing and growing and growing. So the way to tackle that is to create a schedule or a to-do list. And in your to-do list, you want to make sure that you separate out the things that are being handled by somebody else that you're just managing and the things that you need to handle. Right. So the things you need to do and the things you need to manage. And by putting them in two separate lists, you don't feel as overwhelmed And the thing to then do is to start working on the things that you're in charge of, the Mm -hmm. things that you have to. You make SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T. I have a whole write-up on this that I'd be glad to send people as well if anybody wants to get out of their stuck procrastination state. Just send me an email to doc at myhealthypatient.com and say, help me get unstuck and I'll send you stuff. Oh, I love that. And that smart goal system, it's too long to go into here, but that's a really cool system. I've seen that before. It's an acronym and it really helps you like understand and nail down your goal setting process. Exactly. And then the, when we're talking about smart, the other thing to do is to work smarter. Mm -hmm. So I use a couple of 
uh, timers from the internet that you can get. And I set them up so that at 20 minutes from my work, I'm interrupted and I get up and I do something. I try and do some exercise like uh, push-ups, but oh, I awesome. do something. And I don't know whether, you know, to go off on an aside, push-ups is one of the best exercises in the whole world. <laughs> And you can do 10 at a time, which means you could do it 20 times during the day. You could easily build up to 200 push-ups a day, which will have you look like Adonis. Absolutely, man. But you'll look like it. (laughs) It it is a little aside, but there are some YouTube videos where people do that challenge, where they get up to 100 a day or 200 a day, and they do it for a month. Transforms their body. So I also think that it makes you work better. When you're locked into the blue light screen – and you're 60 or 90 minutes in, your brain function goes way down compared to just taking a few minutes every 20 minutes to have some physical exercise, to unfocus your eyes on that screen, to have your brain just take a little rest. I think that you actually end up being more productive in the long run. Absolutely. You know, there's a book out called The One. The One Thing, The One uh, Dr. Coffee has to get off his butt and walk over to his library. He's going to actually literally go check the title in his library. Yeah. So the book is called The One Thing. I keep it out on my desk, uh, not my working desk, but my relaxing desk, because whenever I have the time, I start rereading chapters. The results is from um, Gary Keller. And I don't know if you know who Gary Keller is offhand, Mm -mm. but he's the founder of Keller Williams, the big real estate tycoon. Right. And he wrote this book, The One Thing. And it talks about staying focused on one thing, that multitasking is the worst thing you can do. And it's absolutely true. Do you think Michael Jordan ever went to shoot a hoop while surfing the internet or or replying to a text? I I heard that he was obsessive, nothing short of obsessive and single-minded on shooting that basketball in his driveway. I don't think he was, uh, I don't think he was tweeting or Instagram posting or anything like that. Right. So if you want to read a guy who became a self-made billionaire, Gary Keller, the one thing, phenomenal book. I have talked about the morning meditation before, and I want to leave this conversation reminding people that if you get up, you drink your glass of water, you use your bathroom, you walk over to your coffee maker, and you spend the next five minutes making your coffee while saying your affirmation or your mantra for the day and then sit down and drink that first cup of coffee you have started your day leaps and bounds above anybody else in this world except maybe people are sitting in caves meditating for 20 hours a day (laughs) so i want to remind you all to do that and if anybody is really stuck you know i play coach for a lot of high-level people, but there may be an, uh, a time if you use the code word purity that I would do some coaching for any of your listeners. Oh, that's awesome, man. There you go. I'm sure that people would absolutely love that. Yeah. Listen, an awesome episode. I love the link between procrastination and flow state, eliminating the barriers to this flow you know, phenomenon that we can achieve. It's really, really cool. If this episode sounds like kind of uh, an epilogue or a closure, it's because it is, folks. We are going to be going on a hiatus. The Coffee Health and Science podcast will be on a indefinite hiatus. We'll most likely bring the show back. But yeah, I did want to drop this a uh, little bit bittersweet here. It's been so great producing this show. And this definitely isn't the end of me and Dr. Steve, uh, Dr. Coffee. And like I said, probably not the end of this show uh, as we will be producing more content down the road, but you're not going to see the weekly episodes like you usually do. If you enjoyed the show, if you got something out of the show, if you got turned on to Purity Coffee, for instance, and you love the coffee, I would love for you to do me a favor. I don't think I've asked the audience anything in the history of this show. You could write an email to support at puritycoffee.com and just share your love. 
say that you heard about them on the show, say that you enjoyed the show, uh, say you'd want to hear more of the show, whatever you want to do, just share the love with, uh, with the head honchos. And, uh, it's all good. We're definitely going to have more content down the road, but the weekly drops are going to be put on hiatus. I just can't express my love enough for you guys. Dr. Coffee, it's, it's a little bit bittersweet, no? You know, we're still around and you and I will probably be doing some kind of podcasting for my healthy patient, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I've come on this thing uh, and tried to be real with all of you and tried to be open and helpful. And everybody has sent me nice letters and emails and asked me for books I've written. And, you know, we've just sent them out. And I, I hope I have been able to make a difference in your life. That's incredible, Dr. Coffee. That's why I love doing it with you. And this this has been a really great journey. There's still more to be done. Um, but sometimes these projects need some time to breathe as well. So again, I really hope that uh, you're not too sad, listener. And like I said, send some love. Send an email to support at puritycoffee.com and uh, tell, them, tell them that the Coffee Health and Science podcast made a difference or turned you on to their awesome coffee. And that would really mean a lot to me. Definitely stay, stay subscribed to this feed because we'll be dropping updates. If we do a new project, um, like I said, if we start releasing some new episodes down the road, maybe a monthly release schedule is in order. So definitely stay subscribed to this podcast, but we are going on a brief hiatus. And one more time, thank you. And I love you to each and every one of you coffee listeners. Dr. Steve, any final words here before we wrap it up? Just remember, it's another day above ground living the dream. I love it. Everybody out there, have an extraordinary day. We will see you another time here on the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.